good morning my dear students welcome to our zoology online class dear students in the last class uh, we started the new chapter so in this chapter uh, we studied about some important instruments okay in the last class we studied about some important imaging instruments uh, eeg electroencephalogram then x ray ultrasound imaging and ct scanning computer tomography scanning okay so these are the four instruments four imaging instruments we have studied in the last class the working mechanism and the clinical significance of all these four instruments we have studied in the last class okay dear students so in this class today's class we are going to study about some more instruments okay so today also we are going to study about the working mechanism and the clinical significance of some instruments okay listen very carefully the class the first instrument is pet pet meaning piston emission tomography scanning okay piston emission tomographic scanning pet in short we are saying pet see listen students this pet also a computerized imaging techniques computerized imaging technique means in this technique also some computers are used to take the images of our internal body organs okay so to take the image of our body organs some computers are used so this technique also is based on the computerized imaging technique let's have a few days students okay listen say in this technique in pet technique some radio tracers are used to take some images okay so here radio tracers meaning there are different types of radio tracers are used in the medical field but commonly using radio tracer is 18f fluorodeoxyglucose okay 18f fluorodeoxyglucose is a common radio tracer used in pet imaging techniques understand all of you see here in pet image we can get some informations about the metabolic process and physiological process of our body so with the help of this imaging technique we can understand the metabolic activities and the physiological activities of our body okay dear students hope you understood these two points okay already i told you 18 year fluorodeoxyglucose is the commonly used radio tracer okay commonly used radio tracer so in this radio trace tracer some biological molecules are produced okay actually this 18 year fluorodeoxyglucose is a radio labeled sugar molecule okay so these sugar molecules are incorporated into some biological molecules like glucose amino acid and ammonia by using some chemical methods understand my dear students so and by using some chemical methods this 18 year fluorodeoxyglucose gets incorporated into the glucose molecules amino acids and ammonia like these molecules must i love you then a very small amount of these molecules or a very small amount of these components are injected inside the human body must i love you so a few amount a less amount of these compounds are injected into the human body to take the images okay here using in pet technique some powerful cameras are used to take the images of our internal organs and these images are reconstructed by using computer okay finally we can get see a clear image of our internal organs let's send my dear students so this is the working mechanism of this pet techniques understand that the clinical uses see listen this pet imaging technique is used in the measurement of cerebral blood volume here cerebral blood volume meaning amount of blood present in the brain region okay so this pet is used to understand or used to measure the cerebral the volume of blood pressure in the cerebral region and what the volume of blood flow okay how much amount of blood is flowing to the cerebral region okay and the metabolic rates of the glucose oxygen are also measured by using this pet technique understand a few so once i repeat the clinical significance of this imaging technique so this technique is used to measure the cerebral blood volume 
blood flow and the metabolic rate of the glucose and oxygen understand my students so okay dear students now we have completed the working mechanism and the clinical significance of one instrument that is PET okay PET meaning piston emission tomographic scanning understand that the second instrument is NMRI in short we NMRI meaning magnetic resource imaging okay MRI imaging MRI meaning magnetic resource imaging so the doctors and the people those who are working in the clinical field use this MRI scanning technique to diagnose the conditions of the patient body okay so this imaging technique is also used by the medical expert to understand the conditions of the patient body Understand a few then the next point about this instrument is when we compare this MRI imaging with other x-ray technique or CT scan technique here there is no radiation okay so here not using any radiation to take the images of the patient body understand a few but in x-rays and the CT scan a small amount of radiation is also used while taking images understand my students okay see this MRI scanning or MRI imaging technique using three important components one is a radio frequency pulses one is a radio frequency pulses and the second one is the powerful magnetic field and a computer so radio frequency pulses powerful magnetic field and then computer so these three important components are used in MRI understand a few so all these components are togetherly used to take pictures or images of the organs like these bone, uh, tissues or bones understand a few so here the first one radio frequency pulses actually the use of this radio frequency pulses actually a small amount of some hydrogen atoms are present in our body okay small amount of hydrogen atoms are present in our body these radio frequency pulses are realign the hydrogen atoms that are naturally present in our body. Understand a few? But it will not cause any changes in the normal tissues. So once again repeat this point. See a small amount of hydrogen atoms are naturally present in our body. Here the radio frequency pulses of this MRI image is realign these hydrogen atoms so it, it, it will take it is used to take more amount of energies okay so these hydrogen atoms are while well, these hydrogen atoms are returned to their normal alignment they release more amount of energy okay they release more amount of energy okay so radio frequency pulses realign the hydrogen atoms which are naturally present in our body when these hydrogen atoms are retaining their original position or normal alignment they release more amount of energy understand all of you so this energy is used to create pictures the second component about this MRI scanning is magnetic field this magnetic field is produced by using electrical current Okay, this electrical current is passed through some wires. Okay, by using wires, the magnetic field is produced by using electrical current. In some cases, these wires are placed around the body, okay, to take the images. Understand? So, when these wires are placed around the body, they will produce some waves. That waves are used to take images. Understand? That's not few. But the, when, we, when, when they keep these uh, wires around the body, the electrical current does not come in contact with the patient. Then, third part, computer. Okay, already I told you, a radio frequency pulses, powerful magnetic field and computer. These three commands are used in the MRI. Okay, now we have completed the uses of this uh, uh, radio pulses. Okay, then the magnetic field. Okay, radio frequency pulses and magnetic field uh, uses we have already completed. Then the uses of the computer. See, the computers taking a series of images by using this electromagnetic field and uh, this radio frequency pulses. Understand all of you? Understand? Then, the uses of this MRI scan. This MRI scan is used to 
understand the differentiation between normal tissues and abnormal tissues okay so we can use to uh, we can use this instrument to understand the differentiation between the normal and abnormal tissues so this is one of the use of this mri Right. Second use is this instrument is used to determine or detect the presence or absence of disease. Okay. And the third use is these images can be transmitted in a printed form or these images can be copied in CDs. Okay. So we can use these images in any situations. Understand a few. So these three are the common uses of this MRI. Understand, my dear students. Then now we are going to study about the clinical significance of this MRI. Clinical significance of this MRI. The first clinical significance is this MRI is used to understand the condition of organs present in the chest region, abdominal region, and also in the pelvic region. Okay, pelvic region. Since in the pelvic region, the urinary bladder is there, reproductive organs are there, uh, many blood vessels are there, many lymph nodes are there. Okay, so so this instrument is used to understand the condition of the organs present in the chest region, abdominal region, and also in the pelvic region. Understand? So this is the first clinical significance of this MRI. Then the second clinical significance is. The tumors of the chest and abdomen or the pelvic region also can be detected by using this MRI. Tumor, uh, tumors means here uh, like cancer cells. Okay, cancers. Okay, so these cancer cells also, uh, if any cancer cells or if any tumors occur in the chest region or the abdominal region or the pelvic region, we can detect by using this MRI. Then the third use, third clinical significance is diseases of the liver. Or if any inflammation occur in our body, any heart problems, okay, so these problems also can be identified by using MRI. So there are liver diseases, inflammatory diseases and heart related problems also can be identified with the help of this MRI. Understand? Then, third use, malformations of the blood vessels. If any blood vessels is not formed properly, we can easily detect by using this MRI. Understand? Or if any swellings or if any inflammations occur in the blood vessels, that problem also can be detected by using this MRI. Understand? Then, a fetus in the uterus of a pregnant woman. So, the conditions of the fetus which are growing or developing inside the uterus of the woman is also identified with the help of this MRI. Understand? Then the last clinical significance is it is used to see the injuries. Okay, it is to see the injuries in the particularly the breast region and also in the knee regions. Okay, so in this region some ligaments, some membranes, fluids also present. So if any injuries occur in these joints, we can easily detect by using this MRI scan. Understand, my dear students? So, once again, repeat the clinical significance of the MRI scan. So, the first use is, it is used to understand the condition of the organs present in the chest region, abdominal region and also in the pelvic region. Second, this instrument is used to understand the tumors present in the chest region, abdominal region and the pelvic region. And the third use is, this instrument is used to identify the diseases of the liver region or if any inflammatory diseases are present in our body or any heart related problems also can be identified by using MRI. And the next use, fourth use is malformation of the blood vessels. If any blood vessels are not formed properly, this, these problems can be identified. And the next one is fetus. Okay, fetus means a baby developing inside the uterus of the mother is called fetus. So the developmental conditions of the fetus also identified by using this MRI. And the last use is injuries in the joints of our body can be detected by using this MRI imaging techniques. Understand a few medical students? So hope you all understood all the points about this MRI magnetic resonance imaging. Then the last instrument is pacemaker. Okay, now we are going to study about the pacemaker. See, pacemaker means, see actually, 
SA node. Okay, SA node means the small uh, tissue groups present in the auricles, right auricle. This SA node only control the heart beat rate. So this SA node is commonly called the natural pacemaker of the body. So the heart beat is regulated by this SA node. Understand? Here, pacemaker, artificial pacemaker means it's a medical device used to regulate the heart beat when the natural heart beat is not working properly. So in our body, if the natural pacemakers or the SA node is not working properly or if, or if any blockages occur in the electrical conducting system, this is used, this artificial pacemaker is used. Understand my dear students? So here in this artificial pacemaker, the main purpose or the primary purpose of this artificial pacemaker is maintaining a normal heartbeat, okay, heartbeat rate. So the main use of this pacemaker is used to maintain a normal heartbeat rate. Understand my dear students? Then, see, this pacemaker consists of two important parts or two important components. One is a pulse generator and the second one is electrode. Okay, pulse generator and a electrode. These two components are present in this natural pace, sorry, in this artificial pacemaker. Here this pulse generator is actually kept inside a box. Okay, inside a box. It consists of a battery. This battery is maximum made up of lithium. Okay, so lithium battery is present in the generator and the generator is kept inside a box. And this battery is only supplying the power okay, or electrical current to, the, to this artificial pacemaker. Understand, my dear students? Understand? So, the, here this lithium maximum, the batteries are made up of lithium and this lithium battery is only supplying the power to the pacemaker or to the pacemaker. Understand? And see, here this is a, a low energy electrical pulse okay this device use very less energy electrical pulse understand to regulate the normal heartbeat and here this generator pulse generator is maximum kept under the collar bone of our body under the skin below the collar bone okay so this box or this generator contains box is kept under the skin which are present below the collar bones Understand all of you? Understand? And nowadays, some advanced pacemakers also available. So, with the help of these advanced or newer pacemakers, we can also monitor the temperature and breathing also. Okay, so the advanced pacemakers not only used to regulate the heartbeat, they are also used to monitor the body's temperature and the breathing activities. Understand, my dear students? Then, next one is, use sorry the uh, validity of these batteries of the pacemaker maximum the lifespan of the battery is 15 years minimum five years so a battery present in a pacemaker can work minimum five to maximum 15 years average six to seven years okay then whenever we need to change these batteries or these generators we can change Understand all of you? We can change. Understand, my dear students? So now we completed the next instrument, artificial pacemaker. Understand all of you? So this artificial pacemaker is one of a medical device used to regulate the heartbeat. Okay, actually the not natural heart um, pacemaker of the body is called a seno. Okay, seno artery node is the natural pacemaker. This pacemaker only regulate our heartbeat, but sometimes in some case, some conditions, this if the natural pacemakers are not working properly, the people are using this artificial pacemaker. Okay, so this artificial pacemaker is made up of two important parts. One is a pulse generator. One is a pulse generator, and second one is the electrode. Okay, electrodes means here what wire like structures. Understand all of you? Understand? Okay, my dear students, in this video, we have studied about the working mechanism and the clinical uh, applications of three instruments. Okay, the first one is the PET instrument, second one is the MRI imaging technique, and the third one is the pacemaker. 
okay pacemaker is not a imaging technique okay it's not a imaging technique it is a device used to regulate the heartbeat understand of you understand okay dear students hope you all uh, understood all the points in our uh, today's class uh, so thank you we'll meet in the next class